Hi, I'm Brent Johnson. I'm Andrew Schaefer. And today we are in Forest Park, Illinois, outside of Chicago, and we are at St. John Evangelical Lutheran Church, uh, a big, beautiful uh, sanctuary here with an amazing instrument in it. Uh, Andrew, tell me about this instrument. Sure. Well, a little bit about the room, first of all. It was designed by, um, well, I should say many people walk in, and even though this is a Lutheran church, think this is a Roman Catholic yeah, it church. It kind of looks that way. Right? Um, <laughs> and that's an astute observation because it was actually designed by the preeminent architect Henry Schlax. And Henry Schlax designed many of the city's finest um, Catholic churches in the, during the turn of the 20th century. To my knowledge, and I think many other knowledge, this is his only Protestant commission. Uh, and so it's a, a real jewel of a room, and uh, it's a shame that he didn't build more for Lutherans because we could have learned a thing or two from Mr. Schlax. Well, and, and this is very different from the modern church we were in at St. Luke's exactly. uh, Lutheran, which yeah. if you missed that video, there's a link up here because uh, it's an organ also there built for a Lutheran church, and we have one here right. that was built with Lutheran worship in mind sure. uh, by Aeolian Skinner um, yeah. in 1958. 54. 54, okay. yeah. pretty close. Um, and we've got 50-something ranks here in a, yeah. in a beautiful pipe arrangement. Um, it's just kind of you feel like you're surrounded by a forest of pipes yeah. up here. <laughs> and in the um, kind of history of this organ, it states that um, the pipe facade was suggested by uh, Paul Bungus. Oh. I have no idea what suggested means. <laughs> if he like, it was a you know, it was at a cocktail party and did it on the back of a napkin, or if he like, um, how that all came about. But it was okay. suggested by uh, Paul Bungus himself. Um, <laughs> Paul Bungus. Uh, uh, was a professor at nearby Concordia University um, uh, in River Forest, which is about one town over. So um, he would have known this church and this organ really well. But this organ was not designed by Paul Bungus. It was actually designed by G. Donald Harrison. Right. So we have a, a number of influences here. We've got right. the, the, the Lutheran professor and the Anglican uh, right. organ designer yeah. here. And there was another uh, gentleman, <laughs> um, I think it was Hugo Gerke, uh, who helped on the design of this organ, and um, I know John Becker, uh, Gerhard Becker, was the uh, musician here at the church okay. at the time. So lots of nice German names, um, and that's reflected in the nomenclature, except for Harrison, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a rare G. Donald Harrison signature right. organ, mm -hmm. and 1954, for those of you Aeolian Skinner fans, um, what happened in just two years later, he died yeah. um, working on the St. Thomas organ. So this is one of the last organs that G. Donald Harrison personally supervised and, um, and voiced. And it's odd that it's in a Lutheran room in the Midwest. There's a story behind that, though, too. Um, G. Donald Harrison took this commission very, very seriously because um, we go back to the 50s. Uh, the Midwest was just growing by leaps and bounds. This church was one of the largest Lutheran churches in the country at the time this organ went in. And it had a, two school branches uh, going because they had so many children in the congregation. So a wonderful room in Chicago and one of the largest Lutheran congregations. Well, if you're a good businessman and you see this young up and coming uh, organ builder named Herman Schlicker, um, taking the world by storm, uh, you knew you had to do something. And so there's this huge market of Lutheran churches in the 1950s um, that were buying pipe organs. So G. Donald Harrison said, aha, here's, a, here's an opportunity to build a very special organ um, to try to break into this Lutheran market. So maybe we have something here that's a little more Germanic and a little more Schlicker-like than Harrison sort might of, normally Sort of. I mean, do, the, the stop names would lead you to believe that. Um, but uh, it's, it still sounds like a G. Donald still, Harrison okay. organ. <laughs> um, but we'll hear some, uh, a, a few surprises along the way. Well, I'm anxious to hear it. So um, where should we start? This organ is um, set up by division. You know, sometimes we go with um, uh, tone mm. first, but um, I think it makes sense to explore this organ um, uh, via its division. I'm going to actually start... Um, in the choir, we'll just work our way up the keyboards. So we have these two beautiful flutes in the choir, an eight-foot cadet. It's just nice and nice and gentle. And then a four-foot roar flute. 
That is one of my favorite war flutes of all time. It's one of the biggest war flutes I've heard. It in a is. Long time. And when you can when you pair it with the gedekt, it makes this beautiful kind of crystal sound. And then a, a flageolet at, at two. It is all expressive. The choir is all in a box on sure. the right side as we're looking at the organ. So. Yeah, and um, they did the thing that uh, drives me nuts as an organist. Uh, the choir shoe is where it should be, but the choir is to your mm -hmm. um, <laughs> right in the swell. So you just um, uh, you have to be careful about that. There's a, a, a Klein Nazat, um, which is a, just a Lyrigo one and one third. You can see that's yeah. a really unique color. Those eight and four flutes. Yeah. And um, they're bright, but they're not screaming and they're not loud. They're, no. They're very colorful. Not at all. Then there's a Dulciana eight. Which pairs nicely with the Gedekt. Yeah, that's, that's a bigger Dulciana sound than I would expect. Now, if you have an astute eye, you'll see that the, the <laughs> dividing line goes here, and the ranquette, which is for the positive division, is grouped with the choir stops. Um, and that is because this organ was prepared for an undamaris to go hmm. in. And there was a knob here, and we'll get to the positive here in a little bit. But um, it, when they added the positive, they took the Undamara stop out and put in a ranquette. It was the 70s. So yeah, they, were, yeah, okay. <laughs> they were making some interesting decisions. But uh, it would have been nice to have the, the Undamaras there, as, as Harrison envisioned. Um, we have an eight-foot crumb horn, which is just the most Harrison-sounding crumb horn that I know of. Um, you just Whenever I hear an alien Skinner crumb horn, it's unlike any other builder, <laughs> um, for good or for ill. And I do mm. want to let all of our viewers know, as you um, hear some of the reads on this organ, St. John is not an air-conditioned church, um, and it's a little it's, warm today. It's August. Today. And, um, yeah, so, so. and it was 100 degrees in here mm, a week, week ago, and now it's um, substantially cooler. And so um, this poor organ's been um, through the ringer over the last uh, mm. two weeks. And then finally, a Zimbal two-rank, um, which is quite an interesting mixture. <laughs> Let's count the breaks. Ready? Here we go. Here's six. Makes me <laughs> dizzy listening. Um, so, uh, unique stop. You can add it with the, the um, flutes here to um, create a really sparkly sound. He, nice. he knew the Lutherans like, like our mixtures, and so he, he's like, well, I'll give you a mixture, all right. All right. Um, so that's the choir division. Okay. Um, we'll move up to the great division. There's um, a 16-foot gedecked pomer. Which is more quinty like in the bass. And they really... Mm -hmm. Yeah, not, a, not as out. much as some Palmer yeah. uh, get extra from the period. And that, that's the wood pipes we see on the facade here, correct? No, that's oh. actually the Subas. Uh, the, uh, it is uh, metal, okay. I believe, oh, in there. The um, yeah, we'll have to go, go hunting it down. Uh, there's an eight-foot Spitzgedeckt, which um, is really quite present in the room. The grate is, is unencumbered, mm -hmm. and the acoustics in here are very nice. Uh, so here's the eight-foot Spitzgedeckt. Mm -hmm. 
you can almost use that like a harmonic flute. <laughs> it's that big. It's got a, yeah, it's a big, bold sound. Uh, Vald flute four. With the Spitzgedeckt. Hmm. Here it is compared to the choir. As you can hear. Yeah, significantly bigger there. Yeah, and the forefoot in the choir really dominates mm -hmm. compared to um, the Vald flute. And then there's a Nocturne too, which is original. Um, here, it's eight, four, and two. Really mm -hmm. lovely stop. Uh, and then um, the eight foot principal, mm. again, yeah. um, he was trying to fool us into thinking he was a <laughs> Lutheran, um, but we were not so fooled. Uh, but this principal is about um, the uh, most nicked prins uh, principal with a Z you'll ever have and um, you'll ever encounter. I mean, the languid having been nicked with a tool right, that softens right. some of the um, spit and the air noise. You would not. Uh, Mistake this for a whole camper of Schlicker. Um, let's see. Yeah, much more of a diapason tone than the Schlicker. <laughs> and then a four foot O K T A V. Octave. All right. And yeah. he was not fooling us. No, no. Here they are together. It's, I think, if anything, it's there, of course, they're right here in our face, but the acoustics are so good, and they're actually mm -hmm. voiced a little strong, so that yeah. it's giving it some clarity, but it's still got a nice, full, dark sound. Um, you will find, obviously, in a lot of organs, the Great Division is present and, and kind of drives the organ, but the, when you get the great going in the chorus, it obliterates everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's, it, there's some interesting balance. Um, I wouldn't call them issues, opportunities. Um, <laughs> be positive when you're trying to register things on this organ. Okay. Anyway, there's a two-foot octave, which was prepared for when G. Donald Harrison left the organ. Oh. And it was added um, sometime in the early 70s, I believe. Uh, and it, it's not um, as complimentary to the eight and four. Oh. A little bit more chiff, but it works with the eight and four, actually. Yeah, it works there. With the mixture. Nice. Here's how the chorus would have sounded as Harrison left it. And that's a very vintage -y mixture, yeah, isn't it? Using the nocturne instead of the octave. Yeah. So still a lot of breaks and a lot of brightness there in that yeah. four rank mixture. So. And this sounds a lot like an Aeolian Skinner <laughs> chorus. Indeed. And then a principal scaled uh, sesquialtera. Use it with the eight and four flutes and uh, two foot. Or um, with the principal chorus. That's handy. Set of chimes. 
don't quote me on this, although you're all listening. <laughs> um, I think this, the original organ in this church was a 1914 Austin, mm -hmm. uh, not that big actually. And I think the chimes may have um, made a, a trip over um, mm. and were to this organ. And then a trumpet um, that is uh, added by Berghaus uh, sometime in the 19... Um, 70s. Mm -hmm. It's copper in the facade. It actually looks really cool in the yeah. facade. Um, but uh, excellent stop um, on its own. Not super Alien Skinner sounding, mm -hmm. but I'll let you all be the judge. Well, that's, that's the big trumpet. Yeah. <laughs> With those hooded resonators, it's almost a uh, very directional. Uh, yes, we're kind of getting an enchamade here in the front of the. Of you the know, organ. if you if you want to like do your best kosherow impersonation with all of you know, you loved using shamads and. Is it with the? Um, it's a, yeah. The chorus. <laughs> all right. And then we come over to the swell, which is on this side of the casework, right. closed over here. Yeah, and this is the largest, as, as is typical in a lot of alien skin organs, uh, American classic organs. Uh, the swell is the. The workhorse of the organ it got a lot of a lot of color in it. Um, let me start with the um, the strings, which I think are just lovely. Mm. And actually, um, here's the Spitz Gamba. Don't let the names fool you. Nice and smooth. Yeah, no, I'm missing the Spitz. <laughs> yeah, there's no spits in there. Uh, and here, here is with the Celeste. And actually, this you cannot draw the Celeste by itself. No, oh, it always comes on. With the uh, Love super. There's no schlicker there. <laughs> <laughs> um, very different from St. Luke. Um, so then, uh, working away, we have an eight foot war flute. And I'll get this ready. Hmm. Similar in some respects, the choir one's bigger. Yeah, actually. just a little. Uh, four foot block flute. With the eight, with compared to the other eight and four flutes, you can't say they aren't different. <laughs> yeah, um, indeed, but a lot of color, a lot of variety. Of, you can mix and match there. Yeah, four foot principle. There is no eight foot principle in the mm -hmm. in the swell. Um, again. Pretty refined. Um, here's uh, with the two, the the roar flute, spitz gamba, and four foot principal. I was going to resolve that. Um, so anyway, that works. I have a story. Um, I learned how to accompany a choir on this organ okay. growing up here in Chicago, and um, uh, my mentor, Paul Lindblad, is the organist here, uh, has been for um, over 20 years, St. John. So uh, when I was in high school, I learned uh, lots of hard lessons about registration. And I remember once pulling out the block foot, flute four and the four foot principal, mm -hmm. and wondering why the organ is so out of tune. Another good friend of mine, um, Dean Christian, who is the curator of this organ, has been for many years with this thing. What are you doing? You never put the four foot together. <laughs> no wonder it's out of tune. So that's what I, I, it's the moment I learned you don't draw two four foots that are sitting near each other on a chest. Although, so with this block flute and that four foot principle, the cornet of the organ, um, 
uh, we have two cornets. We have the sesquialtera, of course, and then we have a, a, a decomposed cornet in the, in the swell. Contrast to the great. Very nice. Sort of same um, concept there. Uh, and then there's a mixture. And here it is, kind of with the full swell. Vintage -y. Yeah, and not, I mean, you had the box closed down there, so it's not yeah. a huge sound, but it's really, really controlled and subdued there. It is. Then there's um, a really lovely eight foot trumpet. As was typical um, Aeolian Skinner organs, that was the trumpet yeah. on this organ. Uh, not, not too big. The grade, of course, was reedless until the the Burkhouse trumpet, so um, that's, that's your one lone chorus, read, uh, chorus trumpet. Okay. The Shalmai, uh, four foot, I know you're all gonna be disappointed, is prepared for. Oh. Um, has a Vox Humana, though. Anyway, uh, it sounds good with other stops. Uh, you'll have to take my word for it. Um, and then a Fagat, uh, 16 and eight. And again, it is out of tune. Um, that one does like to get out of tune, mm. but uh, it's fun as a color stop. Hmm. Kind of interesting nice. to have the Vox and the Fagot um, yeah. in the same division as color stops. This is supposed to be your oboe. Um, again, this is gonna not sound great, but if you were playing sort of uh, Franck, Um, okay. and I don't buy it, but <laughs> I've heard worse. <laughs> certainly better too, but it's its own thing. It, it, yeah. it tries to pretend to be an oboe, okay. but it has no business. Pedal, um, there's a 16 foot principle again in the, the Z and the um, facade. Nice prompt speech yeah. there. A large scale uh, sub bass, which is um, on either cool. side. Okay. A spitz octave. Again, with quite a bit of nicks, mm. despite the spitz and the octave with a K. <laughs> and then a chorale bass. Put together mm. with the mixture. There's some borrows. The fagot is uh, borrowed from the um, swell. There's a um, Gedeck Pomer in the choir, which is an extension of the eight foot. Okay. Um, would have been nice if they had just put the knob right there. <laughs> but, um, I, G. Donald Harrison knew what he was doing more than I did. And then um, a two, rank, uh, two foot cornet, cornet. Sounds suspiciously like a Rosh well, to me. I, yeah, that's, we'll have to look and see what we have back there. But um, it's kind of fun. It, it really peeks out of the, um, the pedal. Chimes are available in the pedal um, for Christmas Eve, of course. <laughs> and then um, I saved the best for last. What is uh, we had to call um, uh, the airport uh, just <laughs> so that the noise wouldn't disturb them uh, uh, t uh, t 10 miles away. This is the 16-foot posaun. And here is with the eight. Here 
Yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, that was a thing to do in the 50s. Um, I played Austins like that, Alien Skinners, mm -hmm. uh, Chances, like just, when you don't have, I, I, I assume the idea is when you don't have a 32 foot read, like you just for some reason make the 16, 16 like <laughs> 17 times louder. Well, and it's right here in this um, archway and it's, it's in the yeah. back of the organ and so it just bounces off just the wall. Just to kind of show you how ridiculous this read is, um, I'm gonna put on a generous helping of stops uh, from the other divisions. We'll super couple the swell. Um, <laughs> we will not make this, um, uh, um, we'll not we'll hold back here. But here's, here's the organ without the posaun, um, really quite loud sound. Here's what the posaun does to it. Yeah, I don't mind that. It, I don't either. Um, <laughs> it's, but it, again, it if you're but you've got to have that much of the you got to have playing. that. So here's 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 the great chorus just with the posaun in the in the pedal. So no swell. Makes itself known there a little and bit. And we've got a th three bears um, uh, scenario going here. Here's the Fagot 16. Sort of rumbles, but nice to have a little more, yeah. it would be nice to have a, um, okay. something in between there. Now, uh, this is running on its original if you um, combination action, if you actually mm -hmm. you can hear the air, air yeah. uh, in, the, in the console. They, they take very good care of this organ. Um, uh, Dean Christian uh, here in Chicago has been taking care of it for many years. Um, there are a few gadgets. There's this choir, both great, zero. Um, and I believe, well, let's try to figure it out. I remember it <laughs> once. Yeah. So, um, so you could have sort of your great and choir stops in waiting um, with the zero, and then you could, and, and, and have it, the choir okay. coupled in, but then it sort of acts like a unison off, and then if for some reason you wanted to have the choir only on the great and cancel all the stops. Uh, let's just say, needless to say, um, the both used to be taped over, because I don't know why <laughs> anyone ever would use this device, but... Um, maybe they could charge them an extra thousand bucks, I don't know, for this device. Interesting. So uh, looking at the pistons, I'm going to ask quiz you now, any of them um, just kind of stand out as unique? There's one that says Corral. Yes. So this is a, um, acts like a Sforzando, a reversible, um, where if uh, for some reason you were playing a Lutheran liturgy and you needed uh, like that, uh, a sound for a corral. This is what Gene Allen Harrison thought uh, would make for a good Lutheran corral sound. You ready? I'm ready. There's a little light that'll come oh, on it's too. It's a blind piston with a light. Yep. A little das ist das Heil action there. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's a I don't think a very convincing sound for a corral. <laughs> I, I, um, I mean, it would work for half a room full of people singing, maybe. Yeah. All it does is it piles on the eights and the fours, eights, okay? okay. Right. Which is useful in itself, because again, you yeah. know, the, you only have a finite amount of pistons. So you could theoretically hit the corral and then just have to add a mixture. Or the swell reads. Well, on a, in an organ without, a, you know, memory levels on a single layer combination action, I can understand the benefit of having these blind presets like this. However, the fact that I've never seen, you know, something like a hymn button on any other organ, any other denomination, right. makes me think, G. Donald Harrison thought maybe that was a sales tool. It was, yeah. Like, we're especially for you Lutherans. We're I, give I know, you, a you guys call it corrals. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm, I'm like, that would be great to have just like, you know, I think maybe I have seen this on some organs, hymn, one, two, three, or four, right, just general... Right. Yeah. If you don't know the organ, you're a guest organist, you can just sit down and start playing exactly. hymns. That idea is here, but just the fact that there's one button, one layer, and that 
you can't change it. You're stuck <laughs> with whatever he thought. And who knows? Maybe maybe Bunges was involved with that. Maybe not. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, fine. I, it, that's an There'd interesting. There'd be more sharp symbols so if Bunges was involved with that. So button. definitely, there's like there's target marketing for Mar- for Lutherans going on yeah, in the fifties and sixties. Definitely. And, and one of my <laughs> the, my favorite thing about this organ is having this corral button right next to the G. Donald Harrison <laughs> signature. Yeah, right. Right. Um, which. Uh, it's just, it's just a neat piece of history. Yeah, it's an interesting thing. I've never seen anything like that. This organ was um, actually um, prepared for several stops. Um, the Shalmai, uh, the Dulciana, or the Undamaris, and the choir. And then there was actually um, a Rook positive that was prepared for. So Jalen Harrison wanted a choir and a positive. Okay. It was supposed to go on the rail. Um, as often happens with organ <laughs> projects, uh, money uh, ran out. And so the knobs were here. Um, quite a, for, for a long time. And then finally in the 1970s, in the early 1970s, um, the church commissioned uh, Len Burkhouse mm. to uh, build a Rook Positive. And um, Paul Bungus was involved and uh, he said, um, to hell with what Gene L. Harrison wanted, <laughs> I'm gonna put what I think should go here. Mm-hmm. So it really, it both works with the organ, um, mostly because it's just been married, they've been married together for so long mm-hmm. and they don't fight necessarily a little <laughs> bit, but um, we'll just go through them um, separately. Um, Bun just loved um, to have a really, really, really chiffy mm. maple um, gedect, which he called, um, um, it's a Borden, but he liked to spell it B-A-R-D-U-E-N. Okay. I, I don't know how that's pronounced, but I always like to say bard. Um, <laughs> so here's the bard. And, um, let's see. Um. Oh, with extra chiff. So if you really uh, love that connect in the choir and thought, oh, if only you had more chiff, you can <laughs> put them together. Yeah. A uh, four-foot spill flute, um, yeah. which is um, has a conical oh, cap. Yeah. Here they are together. Yeah, that works. Which, in contrast to the great, here again. Hmm. They did. They were able to reuse the two-foot prestant um, from the Aerolin Skinner. So props okay. to them. This is again really, really chiffy. Eight four two. Now, um, those of us who have played Bungus organs, and I have played several in my life. Um, uh, he loved to um, create these, um, he claimed they were historically um, based um, combinations of various mutations. Um, um, one of my favorite is actually just down the street at Grace River Forest. Um, uh, that's a tear sept, which would be a... Third and a seventh. Yeah. And here we have a, a quit nut. Okay, so I guess a fifth and a ninth there. Yeah, we're gonna hear. Uh, you know, actually, you might think like, oh, this is weird, but um, I rather like it because um, it's you can kind of create some fun s- sounds. Here is without the four. It's, it's bright enough that it just kind of sits on top of the already bright flutes. It ain't hurting anyone without uh, yeah, sticking out too strangely. So, okay. Yeah. And of course, um, another bungeism is to combine mixture names. So, we, we can't just have a sharf <laughs> or a zimbal. We have to have a sharf zimbal. Sharf zimbal. All right. Um, so, here it is by itself. Is um, three ranks? Three ranks. Here it is with the eight, four, and two. Good way to wake them up after the sermon. Yeah, um, definitely. 
Here it is with the uh, Quentin on, because uh, why the hell not? Yeah, that's a little top heavy. So now, now I think we're we're waving at Schlicker here and yeah, giving yeah. a nod to. to I said that. G. Donald Harrison had nothing to do with this yeah, yeah, um, right. <laughs> before you all freak out. All right, uh, and then here, there's actually a very nice rain cat, or at least as nice as rain cats get. Yeah, and I like rather kind of like. Now, yeah. before everyone gets upset that they <laughs> added this to an alien Skinner, um, a long time ago, there were, and I wasn't around, but they were smoking some weird stuff in the <laughs> 70s. Um, but uh, no, it's, um, the nice thing about it is that they, at least um, everyone who's come and, and worked on this organ had the um, wherewithal to just leave the alien Skinner mm -hmm. stuff alone. And so, you know, most of the organ is all just G. Donald Harrison um, brilliance and, and, and beauty. Uh, and the nice thing about the positive is that you, you don't have to use well, it. Well, and it's not huge, and it no. just kind of, you can blend it well if you spend some time right. listening to these stops. So uh, um, it, it exists, and so like I said the positive, the, um, the two foot on the grate, um, are, and the trumpet are the, the additions. Um, the rest is okay. Alien Skinner. And so um, we're really grateful that this organ has um, survived and that it is used um, often every Sunday morning and to a congregation that really likes to sing. And uh, it's here in the Chicagoland area, so it's um, easily accessible. So. Concerts still, because you've been here playing I've some. I've accompanied a lot of choir concerts yeah. here. Um, uh, there's been several recordings done on this organ. Uh, perhaps the most notable is, um, I believe, and Eric, if you're watching, you can <laughs> correct me, Eric William Souter's uh, debut recite, um, CD was recorded by JAV for their okay. Alien Skinner series right, right. Um, uh, back, I think, around um, maybe the late 90s. Okay, well, we'll have to look for that and maybe. Eric, we can Eric was a student, I believe, at Oberlin at the time, uh, and you would never know <laughs> that he was uh, an undergrad. The, it's a brilliant, yeah. brilliant recording. He plays um, a Jurifle and a Trunamir uh, and um, Dupre. Uh, and just, I have no idea how he did it with um, the pistons <laughs> that he had, um, some of those pieces, um, but really in Bach, of course, and Sveilink, but uh, really shows off all of the, um, the different um, styles that this organ can successfully do okay. uh, with a little bit of, of imagination. So um, check out um, if you, on Spotify or whatever the yeah, JAV we'll recording. Yeah, and if you're interested in even hearing more Alien Skinners, those JAV recordings are fantastic because yeah. he's gone out and found some of the most landmark instruments right. that are right. still playing. And so, uh, yeah, those are a great resource. Yeah.
The great division of this organ is all very easy to access and see from just standing up here. I believe one has to get a ladder and step up into the pipes in order to tune them. Here we see the Berghaus trumpet again. There's a panel in the front of the case that opens up. It hinges open, and we can see a Winchester there for the facade pipes with tubed off pipes. And this is a door into the swell. Looking up above at the pipes, we can see there's a chest over the walkboard. That caused some problems later, but down here, we can see regulators for the swell in the grate. And then the reeds there along the back wall. That's some board in here. And then going up to the pipes requires a ladder. Here we are looking down, and for some reason this is the only shot I have of the swell. I don't know why, other than it was very hard to get into position to reach the other pipes of the swell. And I think I messed up the camera, because then the next shot I have is coming down. And looking around underneath the grate, can't really access the pipes from here, so... We'll go out and go around to the other side. Here's a similar door here on the other side of the case, and this we see another facade chest and the door to the choir division. And opening that up, once again we see a ladder and easy access to the pipes. This side was easier to get to, with no chests floating over the walkboard. We have our crumb horn in front. We have the mixtures, two and two thirds, two foot. The roar flute, the quintadina, or string, and then the 16 foot along the back. Now, Andrew mentioned the Austin chimes. These do look like a very old set of chimes here in the choir. Could very well be from the 1920s, but this is a much more spacious chamber to get around in. Something I'd never noticed before about Aeolian Skinner's swell shades are how easily they're removed. I actually found this out rather by accident, but it was easy to drop them back in. The other side, you can just pull the shade off of the trace on the pin, and very easy to drop them back in. They're not the only company to make shades like this, I just had never looked closely at how Aeolian Skinner did it. Here's a quick peek underneath the choir division. You have the relays, bottoms of the 16 foot. And then as we go around the corner, we can get to the pedal reeds on this side. And we see the pedal rank back there that looks remarkably like a Roar Shalmai, if you can see it in front of the window. It has a skinny cylindrical base opening up into a wider cylindrical top. Andrew, thank you for showing me around uh, this instrument. This has been a delight to hear. Um, G. Donald Harrison trying to be Lutheran and then blending with, uh, you know, some Burr House stuff. So, but it, it works. It's still here in the church, obviously. Uses it and enjoys it. They have, haven't ripped it out and they haven't ignored it. So um, so thank you for showing it off. And uh, I hope we'll see what else we can dig up together. Uh, and uh, my thanks to Paul Lindblad for letting us come in today and helping get everything set up uh, because this has just been fantastic to see. A uh, fun little trip to Chicago. We're going to be back in Chicago, too. So uh, make sure you're subscribe to our channel uh, and uh, keep watching for more videos uh, and I hope Andrew will be able to bring you along because it's fantastic to hear you play and like a bad cold show off some, <laughs> show off some more of these instruments that you know so well uh, until then I'm Brent Johnson I'm Andrew Schaefer thanks for watching You might be wondering if this is used um, as part of the Aeolian Skinner, um, and the correct answer is that it was actually used to uh, launch Sputnik back in the day. Um, in all seriousness, this is the church's um, 1950s lighting system, uh, and I think at the time uh, it's quite luxurious that the organist could um, turn off the lights during the sermon. Turning off the lights now.